Good morning. Hey, have you ever encountered a dog off leash while you are walking your seemingly well-behaved dog and it doesn't go well? Have you ever um, had an experience where your dog gets off leash and run towards a dog that's on leash? Uh, or even if you have a dog off leash come into your yard on your property, something where your dog reacts, right? Um, what do we do? So stick with me. I have my top five this week on what to do when dog greetings go wrong. And first, I just want to take a moment to dedicate this mini training to a good friend of mine, Bob, who passed away yesterday. And um, so if I get a little distracted, that's why he is a wonderful, it was a wonderful man. And I want to dedicate this training to him. He had eight eight rescue dogs, these little guys that were just adorable and special in every single way. And uh, so I am here today um, in his honor, his memory, um, to share with you the knowledge that I have gained, the experience that I have from walking dogs for over two decades professionally and um, what you can do to increase your confidence and your success when you're walking your dogs on the streets. Because let me tell you, it will happen. You will be walking your dog on leash. You will be distracted. And all of a sudden, a dog seemingly out of nowhere off leash will appear. And what are you going to do? So what I'm here today to help you is to come up with a plan. Before I get into what I what I do, what the plan can be for you, I want to talk about a few safety tips as far as what just just in general. Let's talk about what makes what makes this interaction safe, not safe, good, like, you know, exciting or whatever. Like, what can we do? The first thing I want to tell you is that having a leash on a dog is completely abnormal for them. It is out of character. It is not how they want to greet the world. It is not how they want to greet another dog or a person. When they are tethered to the end of that leash, they feel trapped in some way. That's just how it works. That's not how a dog normally greets the world. We don't normally greet the world tethered to something being held back or directed in a certain way. So how can we help our dogs feel comfortable, safe, secure, and confident even when they are on a leash. So that's my goal today is to help you come up with that plan on how to make them feel secure. So one of the things I'm going to suggest that you do is to stay calm. And I know that's hard. So we're going to talk about what that means in a little bit, but I really need you to understand that the dog feels your stress from your body through the leash all the way to them. So what we want to do is make sure that you stay calm, all right? So I want you to know that they feel that stress no matter what. So you want to try to stay as calm as possible. And it's important to have a few cues in place, a few games that you can play when you see another dog off leash so that you are prepared. So we talk about in my basic manners classes a lot about checking in and making sure that you and your dog are connected. So not just by the leash, but also by your body body communications, okay? So if your communication to your dog and your dog's communication back to you, it's about checking in. And the third thing I want to talk to you guys about is that, before I get into my top five is about socialization. And socialization is a big buzzword right now in the puppy world, especially since so many people are adopting and getting new puppies this past year. Socialization does not just mean having your puppy play with other puppies every single day. That's not the only thing that is involved in socialization. Socialization also means involving your dog, involving your puppy in everyday life. So having the experience to play with puppies, yes, that is crucial. And the socialization period we talk about with puppies is about 8 to 16 weeks, maybe 20 weeks. After that, that very crucial time is over. So what do we do to socialize our dog when we rescue them and they're three years old? What do we do to rest, you know, when we have a puppy who we've been in a pandemic and our vet said, don't go outside and your doctor said, don't go outside and you didn't get an opportunity to socialize your puppy between eight and 16 weeks. What do you do? 
Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not just about those puppy play dates. It's about more than that. It's about incorporating everyday situations into your puppy's life. It's about having them meet dogs of all ages, having them experience going to the store, going in and out of the car, going in and out of places where they are going to experience new things, new smells, have them smell different things, have them taste different things, have them... Uh, see different things, have different textures, different toys, different people, different dogs, children, adults. If you're going to incorporate children into their socialization period, make sure that you are up to speed on how to greet, how puppies and children should greet each other. And I talk way more about that in my, my basic manners classes. It's important because I hear stories all the time of what can happen when a dog gets off leash and a kid gets scared. It happens. It happens. Scary stuff happens if we are not prepared. So I want to make sure that we talk about the socialization period, how key that is absolutely between eight and 16 weeks. And when we miss it, when we miss those eight to 10 weeks of socializing our puppies, we still need to figure out how to incorporate life into your dog's life, like life experience safely. And I'm here today to help you do that. So when your dog is approached by another dog off leash, what do we do? That's why we're here today. We're here today to talk about what do we do? I get this question a lot. If you're inside of our Paw Prince University classmates Facebook group, you will see people ask all the time, what do I do? A dog approached us off leash and I got scared and I didn't know what to do. And my dog got scared and my dog is aggressive and I didn't know what to do. So I'm here to offer you my top five suggestions on what to do. These are really practical, simple things that you can do, you can incorporate into your life. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remind you, the first thing, the number one thing to do is to stay calm. Stay calm, pause, just stay calm. Because when we get stressed out, our dogs feel it. And the dog off leash also feels your fear. So we don't want to react. We want to stay calm. I also want you to know that most of the time when a dog gets off leash, they want to play. They just want to play. So they want to check you out. They may want to play. They may just want to walk by. I've seen dogs who just are off leash and just doing their own thing. They want nothing to do with you. They just don't. It's like seeing when you see a squirrel off leash or a deer. They don't want to come up to you. They just happen to not be on a leash. So we need to be aware of that, that not every dog wants to come and meet us. They just are out in the world off leash. So we need to stay calm so that they don't think, wait, if they're scared, maybe I should be scared. And then they may react if you are scared. So let's try to stay calm. My first tip is to stay calm. It's crucial crucial. The second thing I want to tell you guys is that you need to train for the basics. You need to train for these situations. You need to practice. And I talk about practice a lot. I'm going to talk about it here. You need to practice the basics. Things like checking in with your dog or having them watch you or doing a U-turn. These are simple cues that you can train with your dog before you get into a situation like this. Before. So that when you see a dog off leash, you're going to do the same thing that the off leash dog is going to do. You're going to ignore them. You're just going to keep walking. Now you may feel compelled to save the dog. You may be compelled to see if you can chase the dog down, see if they have a collar, find out who they are, find out who let them off leash, make sure they're safe. Absolutely. The first thing you need to do though is stay calm and take care of your own dog, right? Like it's just like being on an airplane. Take care of yourself first. Make sure you guys are secure before you help someone else. Because if you're trying to help that other dog while your dog is panicked and freaking out, nobody gets helped. Just nobody. So the first thing you want to do is stay calm. The second thing you want to do is make sure that you have the basics in place. You want to make sure that you have trained for them, that you have practiced in your home, you've practiced in low distraction, you've practiced on low distraction walks, so that when a dog off leash approaches you, you're already set. The third thing I want to tell you guys is to come up with this plan. This is, this is the plan. Are you ready? I have a four-step plan, and it's easy to remember. 
is called stop. Stop. So when you are out on a walk, the first thing you're going to do is S is for scan the area for a safe space. So if you see a dog approaching, you are going to be aware that you could go behind this car. You could go up a driveway. You could turn the corner. You could U-turn. You're going to scan the area for a safe space. That's the first, first one. Uh, stop. The second one, like I said, is train for the basics. Train. T for train. Okay, so we have safe space and we have training. So you're going to train for the basics. And I went over some of the cues that you can implement. You can implement a whole bunch. You can implement games. You can implement checking in, U-turn, pivot, whatever it is that your dog knows well, that's what you're going to imply when you see a dog off leash. You're going to pivot. You're going to change your way, okay? The O is for offering high-value treats. Offer high-value treats. So you are going to give your dog some high-value treats in order to make that U-turn. They may not want to go around the corner with you unless you have an incentive find a way something that motivates them to stay with you and you have practiced your training to uh, uh, give you that option of offering high value treats and the last thing is to pivot like i said you're going to pivot away from the situation so you're going to go find you're going to scan the area for a safe place you are going to train for the basics you're going to offer the high value treats and you are going to pivot away from the situation it sounds simple when I say it, and in practice, it will also feel simple when you practice. So again, I need you guys to practice. That's the other P in here. You all know I say this a lot. Practice, right? Practice makes better. It just makes it better. It makes everything better when we practice. So we also talk a lot in here and in my classes about body signals, about what dogs do before they bark, before they lunge, before they growl, before they bite. There are a lot, a lot of things that they do before that happens. So it's important for us as humans to be able to see that. Oftentimes I hear people say things like, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden my dog bit that other dog or all of a sudden this dog, you know, lunged after my dog. It was not all of a sudden. There were plenty of warning signs by both sides to create that situation. We, as humans, don't see it though. We often don't see it until it escalates. So I, I ask you guys today to find out what these calming body signals are. So I will, I'm here to help you with that. I'm, I have guides for you. And I want you to know that there are ways that we can see how other dogs behave before it escalates. So be aware that that happens. There's other things that dogs do. Their ears go back. Their tails go down. They growl. They get low to the ground. There's a whole bunch of things that are happening. They, I bet if we talked about your specific situation, all of a sudden you would say, oh, my dog did do that. I did see my dog turn away. I did see my dog yawn. There are things that we don't know until we know. So I'm here today to help you find out what those things are. Okay. All right. The last thing I wanted to offer you guys. So the five, I just want to review these top five before I get to the next one. So the first thing to do is stay calm. The second thing is to stop the four tips I gave you to stop to find a safe space, to train in advance, to offer high value treats and to pivot. The next thing is about knowing the body signals. That's the third thing I want you to know is about knowing body signals. I want you to remember to practice and be patient and be consistent. So when you are practicing all of these cues, practice them in different rooms of your home. Practice them in the front yard, practice them in the courtyard, practice them in the backyard, practice them wherever you can to apply them to different situations. And this goes back to socialization. The more you can apply these basics in different scenarios and situations around, the better prepared you will be when a dog comes to you off leash. And the last thing I want to tell you guys about it is the number five is to make sure that you start and end your walks on a positive note. 
every single experience. Start and end on a positive note. Yes, start and end. So when you start out on a walk, you guys are full of energy. It's going to be great. You've got your treat pouch. You have your poop bags. You've got the leash and the harness and you're, you're wearing your gear. You're all ready for your walk. Start out positive. Do a couple of quick check-ins on your way out. Keep checking in throughout your walk. And if a scenario comes up where you feel unsafe, unprepared, pivot, U-turn, check in, get out of the way. And when you get out of that situation, do something positive for you and for your dog. So I hope all of those tips were helpful. I am so grateful for every single one of you. If you haven't yet joined, please join our Paw Prince University classmates group. It is fantastic. We have a blast in there. We hang out on the tri-legged quad and share stories and photos and all kinds of quizzes. And we have fun in there. It's about fun. I want you guys to feel safe and confident and secure in every part of your life with your animal companions. So please join me in our Facebook group, Paw Prince University Classmates, and find out where all the fun is. All right, I wish you all the best. Please stay safe, and I will see you next week. Have a great day.